guys, welcome back to Shaka Shaka. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. Um, we have a great panelist back today. All right, we got a couple of new, fa one new face. Uh, so let's do an introduction again. I am your host for Qu Queen Book. My co-host Bueller. Bueller. Halima. Hey, go hey. Kareem. New guy. New welcome guy. back. Okay. Hey, LJ. Mm -hmm. Amen. E what? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're shy. I understand. I'm yeah, shy you're a very today. timid person, right? Mm -hmm. Samatar. Samatar. Sam Why did you say Samatar? Samatar. 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 Is it Sammy or Samatar? It's Samatar. Like. Okay. Right. Hey, Samatar. whatever is club. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. So we have another hot topic that I want to bring to the table. Uh, Minnesota. Minnesota. Minneapolis. Minneapolis. Um, so first and foremost. There's a situation going on regarding terrorism, all right? In the last couple of years, they've had over 60 cases where young Somali men have joined. And seven, more than 20 Somali Minnesotans left here to go fight with the terrorist group Al-Shabaab. Now, a second wave, but this time it's ISIS recruiting them. Approximately 15 people have left Minnesota to fight with ISIS people hear why this is happening, some will say a feeling of isolation, disenfranchisement. Others say a lack of opportunity. It's become such an epidemic that the government turned around and said, the feds, the federal government turned around and said, federal, this, federal law enforcement, federal law enforcement, mm -hmm. turned around and said, listen, there's an epidemic in your community. This is to the Somali community. Mm -hmm. What do you want us to do and how do we get this, you know, resolved? The Somali community turned around and said, well, listen, these boys need programs. They need mentoring programs. They need employment programs. They need soft skill training or hardcore, hard skill training, whatever the case may be. We need to build some type of programs to occupy these boys and send them off to another journey. So the feds turned around and they said, okay, fine. You get a grant. You get a grant. You get a grant. <laughs> you get a grant. Everybody gets grants. All right. They put money into it. They said, okay, we're going to give you these, this money. And you guys make these programs. By you guys, Somali community, in return, comes up with these programs. What are your thoughts on that, first and foremost, before I even continue? Oh, hey, welcome I back, know, girl. I yes. want to talk. Okay, so there's a part of me that's sort of just like, we beg for this. We beg for this in a world where we feel like we're forgotten. We're constantly saying, but why not us? Why don't we get support? Why don't we get help? Why is it that other ethnic groups get help all the time and funding, but we never get it? And then there's the other part of me that's just like, well, to what extent? You know, to what expense will they be giving that to us? But like, what what's gonna happen if they we take that money? What are they going to say later? Mm. Like, what game are we playing with? Mm. You? Are you giving it to us selflessly? Or are you giving it to us in a manner of business? Because the transaction of kindness and business is two different things. Business is I give you something and I get something back. Right. Kindness is. I give you something and I want nothing in return. Ah. Sometimes with government, sometimes, and I don't say all the time, mm -hmm. it's business. It's it's not a transaction of kindness. Mm. Only sometimes in really few instances have I seen biz, um, government just give it to you, kind of like, take it, just right. have mm -hmm. it. And I don't want anything returned. Nothing. But that's sometimes. Yeah. But majority of the times, it's really so, here's what we want in return, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And then what happens to that people, those people is, it's the lesser evil, so they take it because they have nothing better and they have nothing else. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Kareem? Like Can you I said, there, there's people that are pro it and people against it. But mm -hmm. if you look at the people that are pro it, it's to me, they fall into one of two camps. It's the people that are kind of heavily associated with the federal government and Department of Justice, and they've been given positions of power mm -hmm. that help their CV, that help their resume, give them clout. Right. And then they're the people that are running these community programs who have been given money, 30000 100000 And when you do that, money is hard to come by. Mm. So the people that are pro it are the people that are benefiting in some way, right? right? Everybody else who's against it are the people who are supposed to receive the help, mm -hmm. but they, they're skeptical, right? They're okay. like, it's the Department of Justice. Are they gonna be surveilling us? Are they gonna be watching us? What's, you know what I mean? The only people that are supporting it are the people like, like I'm even said from a business perspective are benefiting one way or another. Right, so that kind of brings up, brings up my next topic, right? So my next part of this uh, the story. So again, Money was given, grants, to these community uh, organizations to come up with these programs. 
the community is divided 50 50. You would think when I first heard the story, I was like, yes, we've always wanted this, right? Halima, we've always wanted this. Give us the money. Finally. We always used to say, why not us? Why not us? And now we have the money. Run with it and we're good to go. Mm -hmm. But what's happening is that the community is divided 50 50. Some of them are saying, so they're, some are for it. Some are saying, we want this program, we're gonna help our, our, our boys, and this is, it's, the, the results are going to be that we're gonna tackle um, terrorism and pro-terrorism terrorism in our community. The other half are saying, we don't trust you. Why are you giving us this, right? Why are you giving us this money? Jay Lani, first, first, I wanna hear from you. Um, you know, these are programs where law enforcement yes. engages young Muslims, offers uh, career, schooling, job opportunities, but but you don't like this. Tell me why. Uh, so I think, uh, Brooke, one thing that's important to recognize is this type of model of uh, engaging the community actually was tried in the UK. It was called the Prevent Program, where the government provided, or at least the federal, like the FBI provided funds to local community organizations, and that became very divisive. So what we're saying here, and the U.S. Attorney in Minnesota, these programs are really social service programs. What we want is for the organizations that are really responsible for doing that to do that and not to have the federal prosecutor, who's also leading, as you mentioned, investigations to be the one doing that. Our community will perceive any organization who gets funds from, from the federal, federal prosecutor as actually part of uh, the law enforcement. I just want to, uh, the articles that uh, came out, <clears throat> One young lady said she doesn't feel comfortable talking about it with her friends. It seems that talking about terrorism is a taboo, even when it's about combating terrorism. One reason why, honestly, many people in our community don't talk about this program is the fear they're being linked to terrorism. Right? Iman. Here it goes. If they're going to surveillance you, they're going to surveillance you whether they give you a grant or they don't give you a grant, <laughs> right? So take your grant. Because, yeah, the government's not going to be, oh, since you didn't take your grant, we're not going to tap into your phone calls. We're not going to watch you walk down the street. We're not going to read your emails. They're going to do it regardless. Mm -hmm. so they want to put some coins in your pocket, mm -hmm. put some coins in people's pockets. But my other concern is, okay, these organizations are taking the money, but are they really doing something for the community? Right. Are they really being active? Are they really telling these boys, hey, come, take this apprenticeship workshop or go to this college fair, we'll drive you guys there, we'll provide funding for Or are they just kind of pocketing it and throwing a night where you can go throw some hoops in a community hall and you're not really talking about it or the problems or saying, hey, guys, like, what's going on? Has anyone approached you? Like, how do you feel in the community? Do you feel like you're targeted? Like, are they really going to use that money? Because how many times have we seen small organizations mm -hmm. get funding and we don't see anything for it? Right. That's right. Great, yeah. So regardless, take the money. You're going to be surveillance one way or another. Yeah. Good point. A lot of uh, another person, another gentleman said he feels that they're looking at us, us being the smaller community, as a social experiment. LJ. As a social experiment? Yeah. Yeah, but just getting back to that, you said which department, again, was funding this? The Justice, justice. The, the Justice, justice Department. Justice League. So it's not, it's not, <laughs> so it's, it's not, not the, social, it's, it's not, not social work, right? It's yeah. not coming from It's not the, coming from the social no, side. No, it's, it's coming not from coming the from the social side. It's coming from the feds. Yeah. So that's where the problem may be. It's under the umbrella of de-radicalizing people as well. That's like, to me, that's concerning as well, because it's like, people in the general population, the they get from the media stereotypes that reinforce things, right? So now you have the Somali community and they're getting this program that is titled de-radicalization. So everybody in the community, when they, you go to school and the kids be like, oh, I'm Somali, the people that their classmates are gonna be like, oh, I heard on the news, Somali is decriminalization, you guys are like terrorists, right? So right. it's like, it's more than just getting the money, it's like, what's the umbrella it's under, right? It's the same thing here in Toronto, a year and a half, two years ago, some Muslims were in the news for not so popular things. Mm. And now when you talk to your friends, they remember, oh, Rob Ford, the crack video, this, that. Mm. That's what the media is showing. And right. here in Minnesota, it's the same thing. They're saying, we're going to give you money, but the Department of Justice, it's all about de-radicalization. Right. So like, it's reinforcing, it's putting stereotypes on our community that don't need to be. Like, the money is value added, but like, yeah. you got to look where it's coming yeah. from. It's 60, 60 cases a lot. In this situation, would is 60 cases a lot yeah. enough for us to be like focus on this? Yeah, it is. Um, I mean, at first glance, when you hear this, it, it seems like a reasonable, you know, preventative measures because, you know, the saying goes, prevention is better than cure. Right. But, you know, when you really look into it, uh, they had this, they had this, I guess, this, this uh, preventative measures done mm -hmm. in the UK before it didn't work out too well. Mm -hmm. And then now they have um, 
I mean, there was a little, there was a, there was, um, with the police officers, right? Uh, the, the FBI guys, they had another situation. They tried this before a couple of years back mm-hmm. and the lines got drawn. So a little, I mean, there's irresponsibility on the part of the feds there. Yes. So there was they, a program. There was a yeah. program two, a, a few years back. There were mm-hmm. two programs that were uh, given to the Somali community, funded again by the government, by the feds. And so the government, was, uh, the, the community was for these programs. Flashback, maybe fast forward uh, 10 years afterwards or a few years afterwards. There's civil mistrust now. It, there's civil mistrust because those programs bordered between, what was it, outreach and, and surveillance. surveillance. Yeah. It, it was very borderline, right? So, now, so, it's, so it's a double-edged sword, right? So now you're going to ask the question, where do the civil liberties go after? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Are you opening the floodgates for the Hunger Games? Is right. it the beginning? It's stages because it takes, you know, it takes, I mean, you got to have a healthy fear. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And just because they're not out to get you, I mean, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get you. That's mm-hmm. one thing. But, I mean, to I don't think you should open up the floodgates for that. You know right. what I mean? Like, the, I think the feds just stay out of community outreach and stuff like that. So are you for it? I'm against it. I'm you're against for it. it. You're for I'm it. Give me it. my money. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you're for it. You're against it. Do you think... Can I, uh, LJ, Kareem, well, Samantha, well, are you guys for it or against it? Um, I'm kind of against it due to the fact that there should be outreach programs regardless coming from a social stance. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. We had to get it through the feds. Yeah. Okay, I was, I was, can I change? Would it have changed where it came like, from? Yeah, would it have no, changed thing your is, mind no, if it was is, from a, the social work, like yeah, the social side of it? Socially, there should, there sh- that should be already in place. Something right. should already be in place. But, you know what I mean? Due to the fact that the problem is people radicalizing, you know what I mean? It's really bad. So because of that, they're now they're helping us. Where were they the whole time? Mm. Okay, you know let me mean? ask you another question. So you're, you're not for it because of where it's coming from. But what's the difference of having, taking money from welfare as opposed to taking money from the feds, right? Like what, what it, money is money. It goes back to that. At the end of the day, people pay taxes. All that money is bundled up and then divided for need, right? Right. So if you say, I can take welfare, but I can't take this money, mm-hmm. the the grant, you're not making sense. At right. the end of the day, citizens pay their taxes and governments say, here you go, here you go, here you go, right? Right. So does it make sense? Like, it's a, it's the same thing. You might as well take the money. Right. Because, yeah. Um. If, if, if you're taking welfare, you're acknowledging that you're poor and you don't have the means. But if you're taking this... I, I think it's worth like the umbrella of the program it's coming it's decrypt like uh, de-radicalization so by taking it yeah. you're acknowledging that your community has a radical Muslim it, it may be the problem but right. the concern I have is like what the media does with it and right. what the ignorant less educated people in the community do where it's like oh well that community took money for that so like every time I see somebody that's Somali I'm gonna start to wonder are they this are they that so that's right. my concern but does the grant have the title hey don't be a terrorist the, pro- the program is decriminalization yeah. of youth like it's uh, yeah, radical. Yeah, you can fall under, you fall under yeah. like criminal. Well, what's the actual name? It says de-radicalization. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. it is. But the programs itself, obviously. Yeah, but it's not like so I'm walking into the program that's gonna stop me from joining ISIS. You're just gonna. Yeah. So the yeah. groups are different, though, right? Mm. So one group that's that's gotten a hundred thousand yeah. dollars is the <clears throat> Confederation of Somali Community in Minnesota. Another one is called the Uma Project. So the the actual groups are not. But what do the, the the news releases say? Department yeah. of Justice program D de- radicalizing yeah that's exa- you're right I'm yes. talking about like the media angle you're right when you walk yeah. into the program like it's it's the same community program that was there before they yeah. just got an extra hundred k but yeah. it's like what the media runs with and what the media is going to do with it the media is going to run with it however way they want to run with it regardless and yeah. whether it was given by the social mm-hmm. department whether it's given by the federal department if that money is given and you can actually do better even get these kids off the street yeah. hanging out in bad areas yeah. and put them somewhere yeah, yeah why not yeah. So, uh, Prem, you're, you're, you're against it. I'm against it. You're against it. Okay. Yeah. Halima. You know what I think, too, why people could be opposing it in the Somali community? It's the simple fact that they don't trust, like, they don't like the feds, or they don't want their money. Mm-hmm. They don't trust them. They don't want them. X, Y, Z. It's like, for example, my brother. Wait. I'm oh, sorry. yeah, I'm supposed to keep going. Yes, okay. I was drinking water. Sorry, I know, I know. I, 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 I keep feeling like I'm only talking to you. Yeah, but bad. it's like my brother and his friends, they'll yeah. have, like, conversations of politics. And because we live in a community that's considered by the city disadvantaged, right? Yeah. And they'll sit there and they'll talk about police and X, Y, Z and whatever. And they'll talk about how, how could the police people have said these things to us? Why would they say these things to us? But then... The, 
conversations and sometimes it's like, oh, well, they wanted to open the doors for us and they were being friendly and they're being nice to us, but why are you being nice to me now? Right. But this idea of if a police guy is being nice to you, you don't want it. And if a police guy is being evil to you, you, you don't just, want it. And it's like, <laughs> subhanAllah, so this idea of the feds and whatever, it's, you don't want them. Even when they do good, you don't want it. Right. And when they do bad, you just accept it. Yeah. Okay, so why not just use the program? Use them, abuse them, take it. And then next, in five years, right, show the results, show that if, if, if it did solve any problems. And then when they turn around and be like, okay, where we have more money, why can't we just be like, mm, no? Or the consequences of taking that money it's It's, it's, it's agenda-based, right? Okay. So, I mean, it's... Once you start doing, like, getting in bed with these people, right. they're going to have their hands all up on your shit. You know oh. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. In every which way. And you allowed it this time. So mm-hmm. instead of, and, and you know, you have the argument of, oh, you know, well, they're going to do it anyway. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Then they're doing it behind your back. And that's that's not you being okay with it. Okay. You know what I mean? Whereas you accept this marakte. Then you're saying, Kale, I live, here's my crib, everything. And that's just not that's not kosher. Right? But you've nothing to hide. Who cares? It doesn't matter. It's none Do they of want a progress report every month about hey? Uh, well, they want every uh, salam is not, it's not going to join Tyson. They want results. I can tell of you that right now. Any organization wants results. Yes. Okay, every really, I really, everybody. Everybody. So wants you leave results. that. You leave that to social justice to, to, to people. So the federal government gives it to social justice, and then the social it's justice law, gives it to that. All person. I'm saying is law enforcement needs to keep their hands off the community. Simple and plain. Mm-hmm. Be police. You know what I mean? Stop crimes, this, that, and the third. But it's not your problem to be all up, like, in everybody's lives like that. You know what I mean? Everybody's life. Samantha, what do you think? I'm currently sitting on the fence on this. Um, The biggest concern I have is once you have your program up and running, like, first of all, let's talk more about the programs because this this conversation is very speculative. We don't have actual, but what are they building? What are they doing? Are they having, like, drop-in basketball, hockey programs? Are they teach, so I'll, I'll give you an kids, example. I'll give you an example. Pictures. The UMA project okay. uh, was give, will, be, will be getting $30,000 to train young Somalis mm-hmm. to be justice facilitators or mediators mm-hmm. who can sol- problem-solve in the community. So, like, before charges are laid, Abdi will talk to Farah and they'll hash it out. Something uh, like that. Mediation. Me- a mediation, even within... For females only, though. So this private program oh, is female, but, but it's run by a Somali female. Mm-hmm. It's run by a Somali woman that was given the grant to run this program. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Like, I don't, what? You guys have a problem with that? Like, what's wrong yeah, with what? mediation? Like, that that'd be great. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the thing is, what I'm saying is, time will tell. So, if if this money is given, if that thirty thousand dollars is given to you this year, what's gonna happen two years from now? Are they gonna say, well, you're gonna have to, um, you know, deal with this problem, or you know, let's let's um. I don't know how they could possibly influence your program, but they may kind of just change things yeah. for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So you become dependent upon them, and you know yeah. they kind of pull well, you out. Right. Right. This is one of those things where, like, you open the gates, and it's the amount of conspiracy charges that are going to happen after this is ridiculous. Mm. Because mm. conspiracy charges, you know how it works. It, you don't even need to do anything. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's then it comes. So then it comes to that's where the whole surveillance thing comes into. If they don't like the way you're carrying yourself or the conversation, uh. then. Oh, you know what? I don't like what he's up to. Suspicion. Uh-huh. Like, suspicion and conspiracy, that's very great areas, and you're opening up a lot. Like, you're just... You're, it you're sounds, like, it sounds like you don't... Can I... I'm, I'm just speculating. Maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like you don't trust the Somali people either. Right? Because who's getting the money is is these programs yeah. who are run by Somali people. Yeah. So we kind of don't trust... It sounds like you don't trust the Somali people in itself, those individuals, because they're con- not considered snitches, but you're working with the feds. So I don't trust you to give that right information. Like you can actually, um, and like almost um, jack up the story, right? Like to say, yeah. So if sensationalize, I could, it, right? sensationalize yeah, it, yeah. exactly, hmm. right? And so, you know how Somalis are with their words, right? It's very, right. it's it's like dramatic. Yeah, dramatic. It's like <laughs> yeah. theatricality. There should yeah, be yeah. terms. Put you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's there's some some terms, there, there should be terms, terms yeah. put on Absolutely. it. Like if some, if a certain guy comes up to the and said, you know what, I was. Considering, or I was researching, and you can kind of get them through the path to show them, yo, that's not the way you want to go. You, there should be determined that nothing can be used against these kids mm. in a legal setting. You know what I mean? Yeah. They have to be protected. You can't yeah. say, oh, this kid said that. Okay, we're going to bring him in for questioning. No. Yeah. There has to be terms. So when you take that money, make sure there's an understanding. And you know what I mean? And a protection to say, okay, we'll take this hundred grand. We'll deal with these kids. Mm-hmm. But if any of these kids say, hey, I consider or thank you, this program helped me realize that ISIS is not the real way. Mm-hmm. No feds can show up when, you know, they're UConn and drag that kid out of the community mm-hmm. center. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the, it, by the whatever, way. you know. It's like, <laughs> it's like you know what's up. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 There has to be there has yeah. to be the understanding like hey these kids have to trust in the government. They have to yeah. believe that yeah, you know yeah. they're not being targeted. Yeah. They have to be able to feel uh. free to speak among you know, yeah, thanks yeah, for yeah. bringing that up because in the past during the 60 cases some of them were just conversation, by the way. Don't don't mm. get me wrong. Like some did buy their ticket and was like, "Wow, well, halfway out the door." Yeah. And we're like, "Okay, bro, come yeah. back." Yeah. Some of this is just conversation. Mm-hmm. So I meet up with you and I'm like, "Yo, I hate the gov. Da da da. I can't believe they're doing this to Syria, blah blah blah, yeah. or Al Shabaab, Somalia, my people's Muslim, yeah. but yo, I'm ready to go. I hate the book. It could Come be, like, it, or even some just passionate people, just yeah. like like you know they they're like really Afrocentric. So like, what they is fight the power? What is, I'm asking you, what is radical in your books then? I mean, flying to Syria. Yeah, that's flying to Syria. That's, yeah, that's, that's, like you anything else in life, you're not guilty yeah. until you yeah. commit the crime. Exactly. Right? Like, I can it's sit here and think about I want to do something, mm-hmm. but I can't be charged till I've done it. Mm-hmm. So you're like predisposing these people. They're going to get on the plane. They're going to go kill an American soldier. Mm-hmm. They're going to do this, that. Yeah. We got to stop it before it happens. But mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. the rest of the legal system is... Unless you commit a crime, yeah. you're innocent. Yeah. Right? These people haven't committed anything. Buying a ticket is not illegal. Having mm-hmm. a conversation is not illegal, mm-hmm. right? Like now, if they bought bombs and like things mm-hmm. to build bombs, yeah, yeah, yeah. sure, you're maybe a little closer to committing the crime. But yeah. again, it's it's the government. It's up to the government to decide what. Yeah. What what. Alger. But that goes back to the fact conspiracy charges. Yeah. Remember, you conspired to do it. Yeah. You didn't do it. And that's a charge of its own. That's you know? a charge, if, of, if it's a charge of its own. If, so if, if you, you conspired, hey, I want to go to Syria. I want to go do that. You've conspired. Right. And that's a charge. Yeah. That's where they're coming in. But the thing is, my point is, nice. what do they have in place? You know what I mean? Like, going back to what uh, Samatar was saying, um, the girl that has that... Um, what her project. It? Her project. Yeah, yeah. That was for, what do you call What's the second project they were talking about? What uh, is it, a basketball thing? Uh, is it a community no, center? It's a community, it's a community center. Community center. Yeah. Let's be honest. Playing basketball is not going to stop you from becoming a terrorist. But we don't know no, no, what no, they no, have. No, but it wasn't you basketball. Know what I mean? it, what? First guy, it was what? Hammond Nord. What's his, what's his project? He's a, he's a confederation mm-hmm. of Somali communities, a uh, community in Minnesota. Yeah. That is what it's called. No, I know. But what did they do? It says right here. It says, it says, we applied for a specific purpose. And that purpose is to help young people find employment, he said. It is to help the community find better opportunities. Mm-hmm. Awesome. I like so, that. Yeah. How can Sounds you say, good to me. Could we, you know that? Could we put one more condition? That yeah. Email was about? Just like... I'd feel a lot better of it if the feds weren't so public about it. Like, you can, you can yeah, help yeah, so help the community, public. but, like, why you got to have newspaper articles, be in front of a podium? Like, yeah, to me, yeah, yeah. that's the part that I'm concerned about because yeah. the damage of association of Somali community and radicalization. What's right, happening? Right, right. Presidential election right now. Trump, Cruz, all these crazy yeah. people, they're talking about radicalization, radicalization. Yeah. Next week, Somali community radicalization. So there's ignorant social people. Social experiment. Out. It goes back to what the guy said. So we you want to help it. Experiment. You want to help the community? Great. Give them the money. I'm fine with it. But just why you got to be public? But some people want to know, like, what are you guys doing about ISIS? Okay, the government says we're opening programs. Yeah, yeah. We're helping people. You have to explain what you're doing with the taxpayers' money. Right. You can't just be like hush hush. You can exp- you can explain it, but you don't have to be like it, to them. It's like it's like a show. Like the people are like you know like the guy who was running it. Like he just became like the head lawyer in Minnesota. Yeah. Two years down the line, he wants to run for senator, governor. Mm-hmm. He's getting his face. Time like yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. just I I just yeah Samantha. So what I want to say is again time will tell, but as you guys just mentioned, it does look more like a PR stunt because they're out there you know fighting ISIS mm-hmm. or ISIL whatever you want to call it, and at the same time they got to make it look like they're doing something for the community, yeah. right? So that's part of the reason why it's, it's like, that is the main boost. reason why it's public. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So um, but at the same time, think about it this way: if if it's on the news that the Somali community has a lot of radicals in it. So some business owner obviously is gonna watch the news. Mm -hmm. So you have all these people coming out of these programs, educated or looking for better opportunities. Mm -hmm. Now you hit a wall of people who are employers not willing to hire you because you're from the Somali community. Right. You know what I mean? So So I'm on on, on the fence, you know what it is? One thing, people will take the money, okay? Mm -hmm. Regardless of what we say, People will take that money. Yeah, yeah. So let's see what happens with it. Yeah. I loved, I loved, I loved what Iman said about like having a way to bring the community and then the people who are giving money to make terms together right. versus I'm going to make the terms and you're just going to take my money and it's going to happen this way. Because I feel like I've seen community projects in my own community where, for example, a perfect example is my mom. Yeah. So there was a community that 
project that came in where it's like, we're going to put funding for nutrition and XYZ. Right. And then basically the community project was that of how to teach these people to eat better. And then today, mashallah, tabarakallah, I see my mom and she has like a notebook mm. where she's calorie counting and she's being mindful of the way she eats. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So I think sometimes these projects that come in, they're so great. Like my yeah. mom today will look at what I'm eating. How do you must stop? This is what you're not going to eat. Right. No, mm -hmm. because this is what it'll do to you. And I'll yeah. be like, girl, who taught you that? Yeah. And then you realize these community I need your projects. mom at my house, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> she'll yeah. come, she'll come. You need to come check. But this idea of these communities, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, and again, I have to say sometimes, these projects that come in and these funders that come in, they have great agendas. And, yeah. I, and I could tell you mm -hmm. from firsthand some of the great things that have happened. Yeah. All but right. then, of course, these monsters sometimes do terrible things. Yeah. But it's not every time. No, I completely understand. Thanks a lot, guys. I really appreciate your thoughts on this. And I guess the conclusion, we're divided as well, just like the Somali community in Minnesota. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so, yeah, get fed, but watch out who's feeding you, right? Yeah. That's yeah. exactly. Get fed, but watch who's get feeding fed, you. Get fed, don't get fed. Yeah. So, Minnesota, what's really good? Let us know. Comment below. Email yeah. us. Yeah. Instagram us. Facebook us. Let us know what's really good. Are we really missing something else that maybe they didn't publish or you know the media uh, is not touching on maybe you guys know things that we don't know maybe there's a history like a really deep history mm -hmm. right and so uh minnesota what's really good let us know thanks a lot guys for tuning in shaka shaka and we out <laughs>